Hello. I uh, wonder if this is working. Doesn't look like it's working. It didn't count down. So I'll open up another browser and see if I'm on. Okay, so it looks like I might be on. Hello. Great. Okay, so hello, everyone. Uh, good morning. And I just wanted to share um, part of my morning ritual this morning, uh, neural feedback. Um, as you can see, I've got my head wired up. Well, who's this talking to me? Um, oh, thank you, Monica. And uh, let's see if I can invite some friends. Um, I'm hooking up my uh, neocortex for neural feedback. I do this every morning. Um, I'm not doing infra low neural feedback. I've already gone through over 600 sessions of neural feedback, so I don't have to use infra low anymore. I don't have any reg dysregulation in the neocortex, uh, no PTSD, no uh, none of any of that. And I've already done all of the emotional purging that I can do uh, with uh, alpha theta, uh, even though I do enjoy alpha theta. Uh, neural feedback. And I'm going to explain what all of these are about on different videos on my YouTube channel. Um, hey, Tori, how's it going? But just wanted to show you what I do in the morning. I start off with brain entrainment. Okay, this is the Mind Alive David. It is a brain training device. I hook these on my ears and this delivers a very small electrical pulse. Uh, it's called CES, cranial electrotherapy stimulation to the earlobes. And that stimulates the brain to produce serotonin, norepinephrine, epinephrine, and all of your endorphins in perfect balance. This is a device that's manufactured by Mind Alive Incorporated. Um, you also get brain entrainment through flashing lights and uh, through sounds. Um, and I'll explain what all of that's about at another time. Then I follow up neural feedback. I mean, I follow up uh, uh, CES with neural feedback. Now, what am I doing? I'm going to share my screen here. What's up, bro? How y'all doing? All righty. I have hooked up. This is ground, the black. This is a two-channel ECG amplifier, okay, electroencephalograph. I hooked up ground to the middle of my forehead. Um, channel one on the right side, as you can see, red and yellow, red and yellow, right? And channel two on the left side, the cool colors, blue and green, blue and green, right? I'm training my frontal lobe. The frontal lobe is in charge of executive control and inhibitory control. And I'm also tra training right at my parietal lobe, uh, just south of the, just inferior of the, uh, uh, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, occipital lobe, just south of the parietal lobe. And by training the occipital lobe, I also get to train a little bit of my cerebellum, which is good for physical coordination. Um, so, what type of, uh, you know, it's, hi, Annabella. Yes, it is, Devin. Thank you very much. Thank you guys very much. Um, what is the type of neural feedback that I'm doing? Uh, like I said, I'm not doing infra low, which is what we do to start. I'm not doing alpha theta because, um, like I said, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing, going through self-hypnosis or trying to contact my demons or anything like that. I already know my demons. We go out drinking all the time. Um, but I hooked this up. You can tell I've got a good connection, all green, all balanced, right? Perfect. Okay. Now I'm going to share my screen with you guys and show you what I'm doing on, uh, oh, man. It's not allowing me to share a screen anymore. How do we do this? Um, well, what we do, training. Uh, with training, all right, this is, uh, Corey, this is entrainment, which means this device, the Mind Alive uh, David, puts your brain in a certain state. We have five different categories, five different training categories, um, energize, meditate, 
brain boost, um, sleeping, and mood boosting. So I use brain boost. Um, you know, I just like to do that. I don't like to, I mean, I don't, it's not like I don't like to, I, I, I just don't prefer the energized settings um, because it's like drinking espresso and whatever. And what I'm about to do um, with neurofeedback is going to speed up my brain. I'm doing synchrony neurofeedback. I'm synchronizing the left and right hemispheres of my brain to work in synchrony with each other through neurofeedback. And the target frequency that I'm working on is in the high gamma. I'm personally working at 40.75 um, hertz, right? Uh, this is a device that we hook up to our head to, uh, with eyeglasses. We have flashing lights of different colors. Actually, I'll show it to you. I'll turn it on and show it to you. So you would turn it on. I had it on this morning, I, I, but I wanted to take the time to hook up my neurofeedback before you guys uh, saw all of that. Um, and right now I have it on uh, brain booster setting number four, which is for ADD and learning. It's very good for attention deficit disorder and for learning. Um, but I do it for myself as well. It's a brain booster. It's really good. Um, during this process, now I'm going to turn it on. All right, you can see it flashes, lets you know what it is, and then it, it goes up like 10 times, right? You see it going up. And then you can turn up the cranial electrotherapy stimulation so that very small pulses come through these probes into your ears, red on the right, black on the left. And the frequency of the pulses is different on the left and right hemisphere because we the, the training protocol requires for different frequencies to be applied to the left and the right hemisphere. Synchrony neural feedback, which is what I'm about to do right now, is a little bit different in, in that this is entrainment. We are putting your brain in a certain state. And you can see here I have uh, left and right fields of vision uh, hitting me with red and blue, right? I've got uh, blue on one side, uh, left on the other. Yes, this, this is a very good form of meditation, very good way to begin the day, a very good way of uh, stimulating the brain. It is very good. Uh, yes, exactly, Christopher. The tones that come through here are isochronic tones, and I believe there are some binaural beats mixed in with that. And uh, the the frequency hitting the left and right ear are different, just as the frequencies hitting the left and right field of vision. Remember, both of your eyes speak to both sides of the brain each, right? So the left field of vision, I mean, the right field of vision speaks to the left side of the brain on both eyes and the left field of vision speaks to the right side of the brain in both eyes so that's why uh oh i must have had uh my battery must have died that's cool but um uh so that's why the uh the different flashing lights the different colors and you can actually change the colors if you want um, I've learned to kind of feel around with cool colors on the side of the brain that I'm trying to calm down and warm colors on the side of the brain that I'm trying to stimulate. But once you get this out of the way, the most significant thing that happens in this training is this, the cranial electrotherapy stimulation that comes through the ear clips. This is the most significant thing because it makes your brain produce serotonin and perfect balance as well as norepinephrine and epinephrine and all of your endorphins. I highly recommend you get rid of your fluoride toothpaste. Fluoride toothpaste calcifies the pineal gland and it stops the pineal gland from producing sufficient serotonin. When you get into a conflict with someone or when you get shocked or scared or any type of a stressful uh, um, situation, the frontal lobe is first robbed of serotonin. Serotonin has a lot to do with self-esteem. Uh, 
And serotonin also has a lot to do with giving you the ability to recognize people's emotions from their facial expressions. So you get into an argument with someone, you get into an, a stressful conversation, and your frontal lobe is robbed of serotonin because your brain overall doesn't have enough serotonin. You lose the ability to empathize because you cannot recognize the other person's emotions by their expressions. So you go into fight or flight mode and everything just kind of cascades. So you want to do brain entrainment. I highly recommend getting a Mind Alive David. You can buy one at biomedrxsupplements.com or you can also buy one straight from Mind Alive at mindalive.com. It belongs to a friend of mine, Mr. Dave Seaver. And what I'm doing now is um, neural feedback. Okay, neural feedback, like I said, I hooked up my brain, right? Got a good connection, nice and green and balanced. I'm training the frontal lobe and the occipital parietal lobe. Frontal lobe has to do with um, executive control and inhibitory control. And the back of the brain, the occipital lobe, uh, it has more to do with emotions and tension, physical tension and emotional tension. So we handle all of that at one time. Now, what is the modality that I'm using? The modality that I'm using is, uh, let, me, let me invite, oh, I think I already invited everybody, good. Um, the modality that I'm using is synchrony. Now, during synchrony neural feedback, the objective is to balance the left and right channel, okay? Meaning, since I have channel one on the right side of my head, and channel two on the left side of my head, um, we're, we're training both hemispheres of the brain to work together, to work in synchrony. Now, I know this might sound simplistic, but you know what? M most of the time, the brain does not work. Both hemispheres of the brain do not work in synchrony with each other. Uh, and that's something that doesn't happen. But when you train uh, uh, synchrony, you, you can reach a very balanced state, okay? Um, you can reach a very whole and harmonious state it's very peaceful, and you have the entire spectrum of um, frequencies to train at, reward frequencies. Now, right now, I'm speeding my brain up. I'm training in the very high gamma zone. In fact, the, uh, the dial on the software only goes up to um, 40 hertz, but I'm training, you can inch up past that, and I'm training at 40.75 hertz. So now I'm getting ready to turn it on. I don't know if you guys can see my screen or how much you can see. So I'm going to bring the camera over here so that you can check it out, okay? I tried to do a share screen, but I don't know if they were, uh, if Facebook would have let me do a share screen and talk to you at the same time. So I want you to see what's going on, right? We've got channel one on the right, channel two on the left, red to yellow, blue to green, okay? I'm training the left and right hemispheres of my brain, and this is the screen. Now I'm going to turn it on, okay? You see we're set for 40.75 hertz, and go. Now, what you're looking at here are my brain patterns. Here are my brain patterns at the top, all right? And as you can see, I've got a lot of brain wave activity going on. I always do. And uh, this is channel one, the right side of my brain. And this is channel two, the left hemisphere of my brain, which is always super active. I'm kind of a you know left brain person, but I am a bit of a, an artist. And uh, you can also see the graphs, okay? Now, before I actually start the feedback process, I just wanted you guys to see uh, this is my brain, not on drugs. Um, what do you see here in the top is a chart that has all of my different frequencies, delta, theta, alpha, beta, and high beta, okay? And what you see here is whether or not I'm actually hitting my target frequency, which means am, uh, am I training uh, or do I have a lot of activity on both hemispheres of the brain 
at 40.75 hertz. Now, you can increase this by 0.25 hertz every time. So, the next time I train, I'm going to train at 41 hertz, and then the next time at 41.25, and so on, because I like speeding my brain up. It's called consciousness hacking, okay? Um, but if I scrunch down my top, you can see my waves, right? Uh, my deltas are pretty high, okay? I got about seven hours of sleep last night, so my deltas are kind of high today. Um, theta, alpha, beta, everything else is pretty calm. Most importantly is this chart down here that shows that I'm triggering. When my brain is in synchrony, you're going to see the synchrony pop up here. When I am producing undesirable brainwave activity, you're going to see this inhibit band pop up right here. And you can see that I'm crossing the reward over and over again. Now, I'm not really doing any feedback right now. I just, want to, I just want you to see the EEG signal on my brain, okay? Now I'm going to show you the screen of um, feedback, you know, when we start doing feedback, all right? So we select feedback, synchrony. Oh, come on. Okay, so I'm having a software glitch. Let's see if I can... Nope. Okay. Goodness. All right. Well, I'm having a software issue. I just did a Windows update. I hope that doesn't have anything to do with it. But uh, I just wanted you guys to get a glimpse of the process, the neurofeedback process. I'm going to hook myself up again on the real neurofeedback computer. I'm just doing this on my computer in my office. I'm going to hook myself up on the neurofeedback computer um, in the... Uh, in the back, in the neurofeedback room, and then I'm going to log back on so that you guys get a chance to see the neurofeedback process in action. Now, I don't know quite what's going on. Uh, thank you. Thank you, cousins. I really appreciate that, man. Um, I don't know quite what's going on with this computer. Uh, actually, I think I do because um, I have been hacked. Okay, that's just a fact. I've been hacked. I've been hacked on my number one main computer on my office in my office on my desk. Uh, so I'm going to have to figure out a way to overcome that uh, today. But I'm not going to let that, um, you know, convince me to not finish my brain training. It's just that I can't finish it now. Uh, Please excuse me. Biomed Rx Health Center, this is Devin. May I help you? Hello. Okay. So, anyway, I just wanted to thank you guys for joining. And uh, I'm going to try to log on again. I might use a laptop to go live. And uh, so the quality is not going to be that good. But uh, thank you, man. I do need to set up a VPN, uh, Christopher. I do, man. I do. Uh, and, you know, it's kind of my fault, right? My my printer, my old printer stopped working, and there are hackers out there who are taking advantage of the fact that HP does not have telephone support, okay? So if you look for support for HP printers, there are a lot of fake websites online that give you 800 numbers that say that they're HP support. And then when you call them, they access your computer from the back door, and they put all kind of crap in it. So... Um, Yes. Yeah, the left and right brain do work together, right? Um, the, uh, it's just that in most activities, other than driving, right? Driving is an activity that, that, uh, within which we use the left and right hemispheres of the brain um, all the time, right? Because you're thinking spatially, you're thinking linearly, you're thinking with reference to motion and activity. Um, yeah, so, so driving is something that's definitely a both brain activity. But for the most part, um, in many of the other activities, you know, um, I think we we learn with the left hemisphere, and then you know, after something becomes a rote behavior, then it you know it moves over to the right hemisphere or something like that. In certain activities, um, but synchrony is really good, and you know, I really would like to get this. I wish I were you know in a city 
where I can uh, share this with my family and, uh, and, and show you guys for free how this works because it really does improve the quality of your life. It really does. And it becomes so that, you know, you want to do it every day. You want to do it every morning. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's incredible. It really is. It's incredible. Uh, it's definitely worth doing. I think what I should do is reinstall the software because it's saying that it can't find the file specified or whatever. So maybe one of the files might have been either deleted by one of my cleaners or it might have been deleted during a Windows update or whatever. But I think if I go to my desktop, I think in my Signet folder, I actually have the latest version of the Signet software. And I think maybe what I should do on this computer, I just did a Windows update. I think maybe what I should do is uh, and reinstall it. Web, um, emails, front lobby. Uh, yeah. And you know, the thing about neurofeedback is uh, this is synchrony. I'm training my brain at a very high frequency. However, if I were to train um, in alpha theta, in alpha theta, there are two reward frequencies. One is in alpha at 10 hertz, and one is in theta at or around 50, uh, 7 hertz. By um, making the brain focus in alpha and theta state simultaneously, uh, what you're doing is you're getting yourself in touch with repressed emotions. You're getting yourself in touch with uh, your, your uh, subconscious mind. And uh, exactly, the left and right hemispheres do process the same information, but in different ways. Now, you have to understand, the heart is on the left side of the body. You know, it's in the center, but center left, right? And so, therefore, everyone has a more pronounced left hemisphere than they have right. Everyone's left side of the brain is bigger than the right. That's just the way it is. And... Uh, um, so because of that, like when we're doing biomagnetic pair therapy and we're doing a scan, if we find, if we use a negative magnet, negative pole of a magnet and pass it to different points of the body and we find pathogens, right? Viruses, uh, bacteria, fungus, parasites, or toxin buildup in what we call reservoirs in the body, right? The body's going to respond with tension and the left hemisphere of the brain controls the right side of the body. The right hemisphere of the brain controls the left side of the body. And so therefore, if I'm looking at your feet, since your femur is the longest bone in your body, um, your thigh muscles, your quadriceps, and your uh, hamstrings, and your leg biceps are the longest muscle bellies in your body. So when your body is responding with tension, your right leg appears to shorten compared to the left. And that's the diagnostic procedure that we use in biomagnetic pair therapy, right? But um, I, if I could, since we're working through my big computer, I'm going to have to log off and I'm going to log on again. I'm going to keep myself wired up and I'm going to log on again from the neurofeedback room, uh, probably using uh, another another one of these computers, maybe one of these laptops or something like that. And, uh, and then I'm going to show you guys, you know, how it works while I'm actually hooked up to it. I'm going to go through about an hour because it's 9 o'clock right now, and uh, I, don't, uh, I have to be somewhere, but I have to be in Beverly Hills at noon. So I can train from 9 to 10 and still have two hours to get to, to, to L.A., and that's, and that's cool. That's enough time hopefully, with L.A. traffic. But I just wanted to give you guys a glimpse into my morning ritual. Um, it's really, really good. Once you clear all of the dysregulation from the neocortex, um, let me explain something, right? There's no judgment here because this is a brain shop, okay? And, and, and we're all human. We all have human brains. And, uh, you know, we all do the things that we do so that we can find relief. The human uh, animal is designed to seek pleasure and to avoid pain. And uh, when we suffer from dysregulation of the neocortex, now how do we get dysregulation in the neocortex? People literally work on your nerves, the nervous system, the brain, 
the spinal cord and all of the nerves throughout your body are composed of neurons. Neurons are also called nerves. And when you have an intense emotional confrontation with someone or any type of, uh, you know, shock, you open up your phone bill and it's $700 or, you know, anything, anything, okay, anything, um, you get a kink, you get a knot, you get a little area of dysregulation in the neocortex at some place, okay, like I was talking about the parietal and occipital lobes having to do with um, emotions, well, that uh, the, the parietal and occipital lobes can tend to get beaten up throughout the course of your life if you have suffered, you know, abuse or intense emotion or anything like that. Um, the overaccumulation of this type of dysregulation to the neocortex is called PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. That's simple, simply what it is. You don't have to go to war to get post-traumatic stress disorder, but it helps. <laughs> now, the PTSD that comes from our troops when they return from war is a little bit different from the PTSD that is accumulated through the course of the normal emotional drama and trauma that people have to go through. The patterns of, uh, if you look at a SPECT scan uh, or a quantitative EEG, uh, you'll find that uh, the patterns of dysregulation for the civilian tend to be more toward the parietal lobe, toward the back of the brain, the emotional centers. And the patterns of dysregulation um, that our troops come back from um, also includes all of that, plus a little diamond pattern that occurs right here in the frontal lobe. And that's the result of having to live in a state of hypervigilance, right? If you're in a war zone, you don't really get a good night's sleep ever. If you're in a war zone, you're constantly looking over your shoulder. You're constantly hyper, hyper vigilant. And if you're deployed for a year and a half or a couple of years in a war zone, believe me, that works on the brain. So when I'm treating a troop, I can solve uh, help I can help mitigate the effects of post-traumatic stress disorder, even troops that have been in war, okay? But it takes a concentrated effort of what I'm doing right now, training the frontal lobe as well as training the parietal lobe. You see, um, everybody is different. Every case is different. Every brain is different. Two people could have gone through the same experience and have totally different effects on the brain. Someone could not have even seen a day in boot camp and have worse PTSD than someone who just got back from, you know, four consecutive tours in Afghanistan. You know what I mean? So it, it, it's all a very individual thing. Um, but the combination of brain entrainment, right, with Mind Alive devices, CES, cranial electrotherapy stimulation, and brain training with neurofeedback, honestly, can help anyone, any addict, anyone suffering from PTSD, any insomniac, anyone with a eating or sleeping disorder, um, anyone who's depressed, anyone who has anxiety. I don't know if I can fix the narcissistic personality disorder. I don't know. That's a personality disorder, and that requires uh, uh, a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of... Uh, uh, let's just say ass whipping, right? Because <laughs> there's no other way to put it. That's how you have, that's how you have to deal with narcissists, right? They need an ass whipping. But but uh, the brain responds to repetitive training, just like the muscles in the body. So if you come here and you want to, this is why I'm open seven days a week. If you are committed to training your brain, I am going to come here every day and help you do that. If you purchase a block of 20 neurofeedback sessions, right, it is highly recommended that you do those sessions in close interval. Try to do them every day. If you commit to do them every day, to doing them every day, I will come in every day for the next 20 days and train you. Because if you do neurofeedback once a week, you're going to get benefits. You are going to feel the benefits of neurofeedback. However, 
after about six days, you're going to be like, hmm, man, I, it's time for me to go back to Devin and get another neural feedback, you know, and get my head together. And that's fine. That's fine. We can make, we can, we can do this forever. However, save yourself some time and save yourself a lot of money. The brain is very elastic and very resilient, and it tries to return to the state that it's in. It tries to maintain homeostasis, even if that homeostasis is in an unhealthy state. So if you come to me with a dysregulated neocortex and I hook you up and uh, do neural feedback and we start getting rid of that dysregulation, the brain is going to take the next few days to try to go back to its unhealthy state. Okay? Nothing against you. That's just the way the brain works. But if you come back and hit it every day, every day, every day, before the brain has a chance to return to an unhealthy state, then you're going to provoke a permanent shift in cognitive function. We have an expression in the neurofeedback world, shift happens, and shift does happen, okay? You can provoke a permanent shift in cognitive function with infralow neural feedback and get rid of all of your depression, all of your anxiety, all of your stress, and uh, put your put life in a very calm manner. Then you can do another 20 sessions in alpha theta, and in the experience of Alpha Theta, most creatives say that they love it because they get in touch with their creative zone. And uh, um, yes, yes, I'm glad you listen to Jordan Peterson like I do. And you're absolutely right, man. Um, right, exactly. Uh, Jordan Peterson says that the big five, right, narcissism aren't really trainable. Right, they're not trainable. They're not trainable. You just got to. You just got to establish boundaries with narcissists, right? It's unfortunate. It's really, really unfortunate. I'm personally touched by this, and I don't want to, I don't want to get into that uh, because I'm, you know, I don't want to dox people that I love. Um, but um, yeah, man, narcissism you can't, we can't be trained. Uh, however, if a person really does want relief in their experience of life, then brain training is where it's at. Anyway, like I was saying, if you go to the gym and you train every day or every other day, right, uh, from that repetitive training, you're going to develop strong muscles. If you go to college or any school and you notice in sub -su some subjects your, uh, your teachers drill you, right, not every subject, but like if you're learning a language or if you're learning your timetables or whatever, right, whatever subject. Some teachers use the, the method of drilling, making you repeat over and over and over again until you get it. Um, that works. That works, okay? And if you come and do neural feedback every day, right, at, like, for example, I'm going to take, uh, uh, I, I, uh, yes, I think, I think that does sound correct. They're not, uh, uh, you know, a person... You know, it's just like anything else in psychotherapy, right? If a person is a narcissist and they really want to change, right, I can actually help that too because, and I'll tell you how, if you're doing alpha-theta neurofeedback, which is what I was just explaining, right, if you're doing alpha-theta neurofeedback, some people, while being in the alpha state and the theta state simultaneously, let me tell you what happens first. When you first start alpha-theta, neurofeedback, you fall asleep during the training. And that's not a bad thing. The feedback for alpha theta is not visual. The feedback is only through your ears, only through the headphones. Okay. But they are putting you, it's putting you into the alpha state and the theta state at the same time. Uh, some people, their first response, because theta is a sleep frequency, it is not delta. It's not five hertz or below um, like deep sleep. It's at seven hertz, which is REM sleep or dream sleep, okay? But it is a sleep frequency. And it's kind of difficult for people in, in the beginning to master being in both of those states at the same time. It's, it's training. You have to train until you do it. The first result is going to happen is that you fall asleep, right? Because it's comfortable, it sounds really good, and you're already in theta, so you're going to fall asleep. Don't feel guilty about that. That's not bad. That's a good thing. Then... After you get a few good nights sleep and your delta and theta waves are calmed down, and this is why I train my brain first thing in the morning, then uh, you're going to reach a state where uh, you can do alpha and theta together, 
you're going to hear the gongs that signal when you're crossing the alpha threshold and when you're crossing the theta threshold. And you may have a couple of tears and you may not even know why you may have some tears fall. And that's because you're purging energy. You're purging, purging emotional energy that's in your mind, that's in your uh, consciousness. And that's good. It's very therapeutic. It's a very uh, good part of the combo platter that I like to recommend uh, for people who are in recovery, right? For any type of substance abuse or maybe trauma from childhood. Uh, and when I say combo platter, I mean group because, uh, and I'm pointing here because I, I'm right across the parking lot from a recovery center and they hold AA meetings and NA meetings and stuff like that. Uh, group, because in group you are uh, getting uh, support and feedback from other people. And the only thing in common with what everybody is saying, um, you know, it sounds like a country song, you know, I lost my dog, I lost my wife, I lost my house. Yeah, of course, you're an addict. But uh, what the, they have in common is that it, it puts you in the zone of thinking about your crap and the reasons why you may feel the need to emotionally escape and the memories that you may not, you know, have processed yet. Then, Psychotherapy, second part of the uh, of the combo platter, and the third part would be well psychotherapy for obvious reasons, right? One on one, you need that one on one attention, and neurofeedback because now with neurofeedback we're opening up the back door, and from an energetic level we're helping to purge out those repressed emotions. Okay, so you can actually provoke a permanent shift by doing twenty thirty. Alpha theta sessions once you've taken care of the dis dysregulation in the neocortex with infralow. Now, what I'm doing is kind of advanced, is what we call peak performance neurofeedback. I'm doing synchrony, synchronizing the hemispheres, but I'm also training with a target reward frequency uh, above 40 hertz, right? Uh, the software, if you if you move the dial, it would only take you to 40 hertz, but you can inch it up with the arrow all the way to 50 hertz, and it goes up in increments of 0.25 hertz. So what I do, what I'm doing right now, is uh, I'm training myself every day, and I'm incrementally inching up, you know, 0.25 hertz. Okay, so yesterday, well, last time I trained, I didn't train yesterday, uh, was 40.5 hertz. And today I'm training at 40.75 hertz. And when I reach 50 hertz, which should happen within a couple of weeks now or whatever, a month or two, um, when I reach 50 hertz, then I'm going to stay at 50 hertz. And I'm going to train every day at 50 hertz until I provoke a permanent, uh, a permanent shift at the highest frequency available. And I'll be a criminal mastermind. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but uh, you would, you, you, you do get. I'm kind of not kidding, but uh, you do get maximum performance from your brain by training your brain at high freak, higher frequencies. Now, higher frequencies, uh, gamma synchrony is not recommended for people who are severely dysregulated. If you have, uh, you know, abuse, trauma. Uh, if you have any level of PTSD. You have to get rid of the dysregulation before you start dealing with the higher frequencies or the higher frequencies are simply going to cause you a lot of anxiety and stress. So, you know, the brain is a delicate instrument. We have to we have to train it. However, when you provoke a permanent shift in cognitive function, that shift is yours for life. Now, you can come back and do, uh, you know, pick me ups every now and then and senior citizens, you know, they kind of, uh, need neurofeedback on a regular basis on a little bit more of a regular basis, right. Uh, to kind of pick up the speed of the brain. Um, but those of us who are young and especially my kids who I love dearly, uh, two of whom are below the age of 25. Remember, the frontal lobe is not fully developed until you're 25 years old. This is why you don't get that break on your car insurance until you're 25, even though 21 is old enough to do all kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, so here we are. I have to head on out uh, to um, to L.A., to Beverly Hills to do some... Um, biomed work. 
uh, later on. So I'm going to go and train my brain in the neural feedback room. Then I'm going to come back and reinstall the software here on this computer. But I want you guys to please stay up on uh, the Biomed RX TV neural uh, Biomed RX TV YouTube page. I'm going to be doing a lot of videos specifically talking about neural feedback and uh, cranial electrotherapy stimulation, brain entrainment, brain training, and brain entrainment. Um, I'm going to do a lot of videos on uh, biomagnetic pair therapy. I'm going to do um, videos on PEMF and uh, you know the different uh, dietary things that we do, uh, dimethyl sulfoxide, um, and all of that fun stuff. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'm going to take, I'm going to sign off now so I can actually train my brain and start the day. Thank you very much, man. Love you guys. Take care. This is cool. Thank you. Thanks for, thanks for watching.